welcome to another tutorial from Blender Insight. This time about a dragon egg or cage egg as you could see in the introduction. The reason for it is simply because you asked for it. I posted one of those eggs on uh, Facebook, it got like 200 likes and a lot of people asking how do you do it. It's very simple but I will show you. Uh, first of all I will take this cube away so I just press X to delete and I will add an icosphere. So shift A, mesh, and here we find my icosphere. I will now shape this into an egg. So I just press S and shift Z to uh, make it shrink on all places except the height until I'm satisfied with the shape. And then I just go to object and apply scale. Now the modeling is finished. Very simple. Next thing, add modifiers. So I go to modifiers and the first modifier I will add is the bevel. So I go to add modifier and then I can find bevel here. And as soon as I put that in, you can see that the shape has changed a bit here. But the magic is to go to this only vertices where I can see that it uses the corners instead of edges when it uh, is doing the beveling. So I check that and Take a close look at the pattern when I check it, then you see it will be changed once again. Now I would like to have it like, uh, so, so these uh, edges here are very visible and then the shaders or faces will be inside that. And to do that I add another modifier and it's the wireframe. So I just go to add a modifier again and wireframe. And as soon as I do that, you can see I now have the edges, but I have lost the faces. To get the faces back again, I just uncheck replace original. And now I have the base for that magic egg. I also would like to add a point light in the middle. So I just press shift A again, go to light and add a point. And I can also increase the light of that point light so I go to this little light here I can press use nodes not necessary and go to power and add like 100 watts or something like that okay now I would like to see that lamp and so on so I go to rendered view here and I select my egg and I select a new material for the egg so I go here and select new and now I have it if I now change the transmission you can see that the light is shining through the egg and now we all had to do is um, add some uh, pattern of colors and perhaps some bumps and so on on that one and we can do that as well uh, but I can change the background to black first just to make it look nicer so I go to the word here and change the color here to just black so and I often like to use when it comes to color uh, wavelength because then I got this rainbow color magic colors and to make that happen you can do it in a lot of ways but I do like this so first of all I add a texture coordinate and input and here you find a texture coordinate then I split the axis, so I get an X and Y and Z axis, and I will use the Z axis. So I go into Shift A again, and here we'll find a converter and separate X, Y, Z. And that I can connect to generated in this case. That means that I get a zero from the beginning, and then it goes down to one, which will paint the egg from one color at the top to another color at the bottom. And to paint that, I add some math between here. So I press Shift A again, go to Converter and select Math. And then I can just copy this one. So Shift D to copy it. And that one I change to Multiply. So now we have the ingredients for that. And then we also need uh, to change from a value into a color. So I now also add another converter, shift A converter, and here you can find wavelengths. A wavelength uh, 
have a visible light in a range of like 300 to 700 or 800 or something. So if you can get that number here into some visible number here, you get color. So I connect Z axis to the multiply and I take the multiply to the add and I take the add to the wavelength and the wavelength to the color. And now you can see it's black and that we easily change by just changing these values here. So if I change the multiplier to like 300 and I add 400 here, you can see you get this rainbow color. Then if you would like to have a smaller change, then you add uh, less number in the multiplier. So if I just add 30 here, you can see I have almost one color and then I can change this to make it into whatever color I want to. And if I wouldn't like to have some more changes, so I now have like green into blue or I have from red into yellow, then I just increase the multiplier a bit here. And the next thing I did uh, with my egg was that I separated the lines here with um, uh, the faces. And to do that, I just used the point pointiness input because that can feel the edges. So shift A, input, and here you can find something called geometry. And in geometry, in the bottom here, you have pointiness. And if you just add a color ramp to that, so I go to Converter and Color Ramp and change the value here to somewhere in the middle. You get the point where pointiness are as sensitive as possible. Then you can fine adjust that later on. But we also need another shader. So we have like metal or something on our edges. So I just copy this one. Shift D, so I have another, and then I use a mix shader. So Shift A, go into shader, and here I have a mix shader, so I can connect that one and that one into this. So now I have two of them, and I will change this into some metallic, and I will also take away the transmission for that one. And now I use my Pointiness here, you can see if I can drag that so you can see it really near here, like that. Uh, the value out here, I put that into factor, but since that is color, I use a converter again. So I press Shift A, converter, and here we have RGB to black and white. That ain't needed for this because that is black and white here, but I do it because it's nicer, looks nicer. So now you have everything into this metallic here. So now it's time for you to fine tune. And if you do it in a good way, you can get, it's around 0 0.5 here. You have to look out so you can find it. And now you can see now I have metallic here and I have the glass here. So I just make this other way around. So something like this I believe. So now you can see that I have mostly metallic here and then I have the gloss on the faces. And then I can just change a bit here to a little bit more roughness or sorry a little less roughness so we have something that is glowing here so on. And then we have some material. So now we can start playing. So I can go back to my modifiers and explain a little bit how these things work. As you can see now, you have just a very simple shape here. But as soon as you change the segment, you get more segments to work with. And a simple shape is now a star. And you can, of course, add more segment to make another interesting pattern and so on. To move those patterns, you can use those uh, width and you can use profile. So with width, you spread the pattern out a bit. And with 
uh, the profile, you bend it. So you can change it so it can go in or so it goes out. And you can also go over each other so you get a really bad topology. It's up to you how you would do, uh, like to do it. And it's also uh, together with width. So even if you have a bad topology here, if you change the width so it's get a little bit smaller, you get a better value of it later on. So it, it looks more good. So, so it's just to play with, add as many segments as you want to and change the width and so on until you get something that you like. And when you do that, it could be that you have to change the value up here a bit because uh, the angles and so on be between these will be changed a bit. So always have to fine tune it slightly to, to get it to work. Then uh, how visible you would like the edges to be, that you just uh, decide on the thickness for uh, the wireframe here. So if you add more thickness here, you get uh, a much more uh, clear edge. Simple as that. So that is uh, basically all you have to do. Uh, since this is very much following your model, you can get a much more complicated pattern just by uh, adding some more faces. So I can go to my solid view again. I can press tab to go to edit and I can add like an inset here. So I press I and I again and just drag it in here like this. And now I go press tab again to go out and you can see now it's got a really complicated pattern here. It looks uh, like I worked for hours and it, as you could see, it's like five minutes work. And then I just fine tune it until I'm pleased with it. And when I'm pleased with it, I can just press F12 to render and get my uh, pattern out here uh, until I'm satisfied. And I can go to the compositing and do some uh, glowing stuff and so on. So I can see, set my image editor here uh, and use the render result so I can see what I'm doing. And then you just press use notes and you can then add some things between here or sunbeams or glow or whatever. I can show you like sunbeams, very easy. So shift A go to filter and here you have the sunbeams you can then just add a mix of color so shift a and color and mix uh, just connect the sunbeams here and from the image into the sunbeams and put in this to add and now you have a ray length of zero no sunbeams but if you increase you get sunbeams very easy so uh, that is all very very simple it's uh, hardly five minutes work uh, but you can play with it how much you want to and of course it will work on all shapes from Suzanne to the cube to whatever you are building uh, to get this nice pattern I often use it to create uh, advanced uh, lamps uh, in a building or something like that but it's up to you how you would like to use the patterns so I hope you learned something and see you next time. Goodbye.